fellow uh, mr ashok kumar very energetic uh, in the field of cyber security uh, he is currently serves as a research associate associate at tifpsc core in cyber security uh, his area of interest are cyber forensic online social media analysis and uh, i would like to uh, invite ashok ji kindly share your ppt and start the session uh thank you sir uh so i hope my screen is visible right yes visible go ahead ashok yeah sir fine sir uh so um i just want to uh, thank ramesh sir for giving this opportunity uh, to just share my insights on vulnerability assessment and malware iocs um i hope most of the uh, participants those are available here like uh, will be uh, from faculty category somewhere on teaching and then uh, very few might be on the research category as uh, I, as the introduction was given for me i am uh, ashok kumar mohan i am a research associate here in amrita university we have a specific center uh, for uh, cyber security we offer a full time mtech program in cyber security so i am uh, doing my research uh, specifically i am just doing my uh, phd in digital forensics uh, so this is my profile i hope you can just uh, uh, google for my name uh, with my university name amrita university ashok kumar mogan cyber So you just uh, land on to my profile. Uh, it has a comprehensive list of what are what are my research areas, so the, what are the areas in which we are working. And from Amrita, we used to work uh, for uh, government projects like uh, ISRO, DRDO, and some sort of things. So everything will be available here. So anything related to my technical skills, and if you want to know anything additional about cyber security, cyber forensics, or my area of research in which I can share you some additional insights, you can just very well get in touch with me. So with this short intro, we'll just get on to the actual session. So today's session, we are just going to discuss on uh, VAPT. As the name goes, it's vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. So uh, just a minute. Uh, the scope for today's uh, session, uh, this one hour or one and twenty minutes, will be like on uh, VA. We are just going to check on the first half of the security testing. Uh, that is on vulnerability assessment. so before getting on to the things right we'll just get on to some uh, introductory level definitions which is mandatory like uh, you go out and say that hey i have just attended a session on vulnerability assessment in cyber security someone will ask what is a vulnerability what you are going to assess in that right so after that what is the benefit for my organization right so how that uh, comes into cyber security so we'll just see the fundamentals so we call it as a vulnerability ecosystem so in today's world guys right, whenever you are discussing right uh, So everyone, uh, let me just open my notepad. So for ease of use, I might be typing something in between. So how many of you have heard of this keyword, GAFAM, G-A-F-A-M? I hope my screen is visible, right? Uh, so how many of you have heard of this GAFAM, G-A-F-A-M? So we know we know an ecosystem, right? Ecosystem is a place or the surroundings in which we live, right? If you might have heard a age-old definition, right? So ecosystem is the place or the environment in which we live. so uh, gafam is typically a recent uh, acronym that is available on the internet right so let me just uh, uh, check what this gafam is i'm just opening another page i'm just uh, googling for that so what does it says like uh, i can see here right google apple facebook amazon and microsoft so this is the ecosystem which, uh, technically speaking the digital ecosystem which we live in right so what it is someone can say claim that okay hey i have an in, uh, i have a computer i'm doing all my jobs i don't want to connect to internet but current day whom over it may be you may be an academician a company maybe a civil engineer a mechanical engineer you run a company whatever it may be we are connected to internet whenever we land on to the internet you just connect to internet and say hello google comes in right so then the other partners comes in your apple your facebook amazon microsoft so current day the ecosystem or the digital ecosystem which we live or is uh, revolving in and around gafam ecosystem right um, so to start with right i just want to give you uh, like one line of definitions of vulnerability threat exploit and payload so because the whole of the session will be revolving all these keywords i'll be regularly speaking about what is vulnerability why there's a threat who is going to exploit what is the payload inside an exploit 
So all these things, right? So we'll just start with the first definition of this uh, vulnerability. Fine. So vulnerability is typically a weakness in a system. So just if you want to just ask me, say like uh, technically just define what is a vulnerability. I can say like okay, vulnerability is typically a weakness in a system. So let's take an example. I've just given maybe for like ease of use, we have taken an example of a house. So maybe uh, shortly we'll just get on to a technical example, right? Uh, which we want to we'll discuss with some uh, digital related content. But for uh, general understanding, we'll just take an example of a house which is going to have a, a pretty good uh, window which uh, with a glass glass window, right? So what is the vulnerability there? If someone is having a window, even if it's not looking good, they are having a window which is made of uh, uh, some sort of metals or some sort of rigid things, right? So it's uh, so-called secure, right? So someone have to just bring something a hard object to cut it and just get into things. But someone is going go having a general glass window, right? So what is the vulnerability? Or what is vulnerable? Someone can just uh, see. Someone can take a hammer, or else they can take a stone, and then they can just crack the window, right? So typically, whenever we talk of this, whenever we are discussing on vulnerability assessment and penetration testing or VA, vulnerability means weakness in a system. Single line, you can say what is vulnerability? It's a weakness in your system. It can be your computer system, it can be your general system, it can be your organization, whatever it may be. It's a weakness in a system. Fine. So we'll see exploit, right? So there is a weakness, right? We found okay, the window is weak. Maybe I am an attacker, I am a bad guy, right? Someone is going to just uh, uh, get into your weakness or else they are just going to use your weakness right so the second thing is exploit you can just imagine like a bomb some places vulnerable they are putting a bomb over there right so exploit is simply something like that helps to just um, open the vulnerability or that helps to just expose the vulnerability so here the exploit is a hammer right so how to put the exploit into that maybe normally if i just throw the exploit uh, throw the hammer in some place right so people will feel suspicious i'm putting inside a cover like a polythene cover and throwing it Obviously, when someone notices, it's like uh, some cover is flying, but inside that maybe a hammer or a stone or something will be there. So generally thinking, maybe I am a threat to your house. If this is your house, to your house, I am a threat. I am a threat agent who is threatening you, right? You have a vulnerable window. That is your weakness. So I am a threat agent. I am just going to drop on a, a exploit that is hidden inside a payload. So vulnerability is the weakness. Exploit is the actual uh, uh, malicious program or bad program. In technically speaking, in computer terms, it's going to be a bad program. That's what we call it as viruses, malwares, and all sort of things. And payload is a container. It look, it's pretty good looking. The cover is good looking, but inside the cover, something bad is there. So with this general uh, layman term of vulnerability, exploit, and payload, I'll just get on to a, a typical definition of uh, uh, vulnerability, exploit, and payload with respect to an attachment. So let's take an example. Uh, we are receiving a mail. In that mail, there is a PDF attachment. You say uh, maybe a PDF document is there. The document says, okay, uh, this is, uh, again, this is the month in which we are, uh, most of us will be filing our IT returns, right? It says uh, from a mail ID, maybe it looks like a genuine mail ID, maybe some income tax at gmail.com mail ID says like, you have not filed your IT returns. There's an attachment here. In the click, fill the form and file it, or else maybe you, uh, some legal prosecutions will be taken. So what is the scenario? Who is the threat agent? Someone is sending you a mail pretending as if they are uh, from government organization or else this IT return groups. So they are the threat agents. They know you are vulnerable. You are going to click the mail and you are going to open the mail. So they are the threat agent. What they are doing, what is the payload they are using? They are using a payload called as a PDF. PDF says IT returns 2020.pdf. So normally looking, the payload looks legitimate. It's saying, okay, whenever even if you open the payload, it will say, okay, maybe it may show you a general form that is available on the IT return website saying that you need to just fill the form and send it fine but what the payload is typically like a container which is going to drop the malware or drop the malicious program so inside the payload you have something like a pdf like can i you can imagine like you have a you got the mail the mail is having an a pdf attachment now whenever you open the pdf attachment typically i'll give you an example I hope most of us will have a, a habit uh, i claim it to be a bad habit of storing passwords in the browser Every time when we log into organization law website or else when we log in into our Gmail or whatever it may be, we store the passwords in browsers. Uh, what is the uh, like logic begins storing a password in browser? If you are able to store the password in browser, in future, whenever you type gmail.com, it will directly take you to gmail.com because the passwords are stored in the browser. If you, a person who has having access to your computer or laptop browser, is able to enter your, sorry, is, is able to just... Uh, 
take your password from the stored things the same attacker coming into your system who's getting control of your system can take the password right so this you know, there is a as we are discussing about a pdf file right there is a pdf file which claims to be from it returns right so when you double click and open the pdf file the pdf file is having a you can see here whatever so the pdf file is pdf file is actually a payload right the payload is having an exploit the exploit is typically a code a piece of code that what we claim it to be a virus malware ransomware trojan any sort of malicious program right so that is going to steal the password which you have stored on your browser fine right? so what happens let's come let's just refresh it again i am uh, there's an attacker who knows you are vulnerable sending a mail a spoofed mail as if it is from an it returns you are receiving a mail with all contents and everything uh, in the name of it returns so you are just having a uh, pdf document you are clicking and opening the pdf document you are entering something and returning sending the mail but whenever you click and open the pdf document you say you are using adobe reader adobe reader the current version might be 60 or 61 there this you might be using older adobe reader maybe 2 years before you might have downloaded adobe reader but you have not updated it so the older adobe reader will be like 30 32 version now current version is 60 62 version 30 versions behind so what all the vulnerabilities that is available in adobe reader will be exploited so whenever you double click and open the pdf document in the background it will just take the password whichever is stored in your browser it might just send a copy to the attacker fine so what do your attack surface your uh, pdf reader whichever your pdf reader which you have not updated is typically your attack surface fine so this is a general intro about uh, vulnerability assessment fine so what's the vulnerability fine as the name goes vulnerability assessment assessment means you we do assess right so we do just uh, give an exam for students and then grade them based upon their performance so what here we are going to do vulnerability assessment you can assess your company you can assess your website you can access your hardware you can assess your software anything related to technology so if i'm going to access my company's website i'm just going to do a vulnerability assessment on my website what is my website where is it hosted how strong is my website is right so whether the attacker can come into my website right whether the username password i am typing on the website is going on normal plain text or else encrypted or locked text right so these sort of things so with this general introduction about vulnerability we'll get on to the second half uh, as the name goes whenever we talk of vulnerability right in technical terms when we, when we talk of cyber security right so va and pt va and pt are a combo we say like uh, uh, they just both come together so when we talk of va and pt right so we'll just see we we already discussed something on vulnerability vulnerability is typically a weakness in a system right so va says how big the hole is right so we can just imagine okay you have a house in your house there are some uh, rat mines are there the rat have made many holes in your house so you can see like okay 1 2 3 you take a typical example of a room in this room 1 2 3 three places there is a hole the rat maybe the mice might have just digged in right so va the vulnerability assessment uh, clearly says uh, how big the hole is so okay in my house i am having three four holes this hole is like 2 inches other hole is 5 inches other hole is very less right very small so vulnerability assessment as the name goes you are going to assess the vulnerability what are all the weakness in your system or what are all the weakness in your computer or your website so that is vulnerability assessment the second half of the thing will be pt penetration testing penetrate you know right something penetrates into the scenario so penetration testing is how bad the hole is you can clearly see right how big the hole is you have seen okay there's a hole how bad the hole is whether a small rat can enter whether a big rat can enter so that is the second thing pt so i'm saying like your website is not having a uh, digital certificate or else your website is not having a https so that is va if i'm able to just uh, capture the packet whichever username password you are typing in your website i am just sitting in between and capturing the packet and showing you hey i have the proof i have the proof that your website is vulnerable i can see your passwords in plain text that is called pt accessing what is vulnerable accessing the hole is called vulnerability assessment and showing you a proof that is called pt so va pt in general terms comes as a combo uh, vulnerability assessment and penetration testing but in today's scenario with respect to our uh, topic we are just going to discuss only on the vulnerability assessment part just to identify the vulnerability or else you can say like uh, Uh, maybe someone comes to audit for your college right any sort of you see ugc or nac or aict audits they come come for an audit they'll review everything and then they'll give a comprehensive report okay 
uh, it's not actually a vulnerability they'll say okay uh, maybe you are your teacher student ratio is very less or else uh, some sort of uh, practical things are missing those sort of things they have just found some vulnerabilities or weaknesses in your system and they are reporting vulnerability assessment is typically identifying the vulnerability and reporting no sort of preventive measures will be taken right again penetration testing is finding the vulnerability doing an attack and then showing the proof hey this is i can show you a proof your website is vulnerable or else your software or your computer is vulnerable right so this is vulnerability assessment and uh, penetration testing i've given i've taken a typical wikipedia definition of vulnerability assessment it's a process in which the it systems you can imagine like your computers network softwares operating system application softwares even a bit of hardware is involved in that right so all your it infrastructures we call it it infrastructures right in the process in which your it infrastructures are scanned i'm just going to scan your website scan your uh, systems what is the purpose of scanning what is the purpose of assessing just to find vulnerabilities identifying the presence of known and unknown vulnerabilities you know right there is a known weakness and unknown weakness your house there's a fence broken you know that the fence is broken you just leave it so that's your known vulnerabilities there is another place in your house where the fence is so weak someone can come kick and open it so that is unknown vulnerability fine so you have known and unknown vulnerability categories right so if you take a website uh, there are general known vulnerabilities i'll just uh, okay the demo part we'll see later so known vulnerability says things is there is a vulnerability weakness in my system fine even the attacker knows even you the owner of the website or software knows so that is common sometimes some organization they used to accept the vulnerability okay i know this is vulnerable but not much severe i am accepting the vulnerability unknown vulnerabilities we claim it to be uh, in technical terms we call it to be uh, zero days zero days zero days uh or else we call it as apt advanced persistent threats right so these two are things are unknown stuff zero days is typically like a newborn baby till yesterday we don't know there's a vulnerability in my windows 7 system today maybe there's a news coming saying that my windows 7 system which is having a small remote desktop that is vulnerable apt is typically you see like uh, maybe a small piece of virus or code that is sitting on your system maybe you can see can if someone is finding an apt in your system it's as the name goes it's called um uh, uh, advanced right uh, persistent threats okay right? so it's going to be a threat threat means that is going to cause some damage to your organization persistent that is still existing in your system it is going to be advanced threat so only when you identify uh, maybe after a week or after a month even after years so most of the apts which we find in websites like it will say like microsoft windows 7 is vulnerable for the past 2 years we are using the same uh, vulnerable system any attacker knows this apt or else any attackers knows to how to put this apt they can just get control over your system right so those are the things that is called known and unknown vulnerabilities fine so we'll just get on to the next part so we have seen what is a vulnerability assessment and then we have seen what is vulnerability assessment and penetration testing as per the topic constraint we are just going to see what are the vulnerabilities that is available in it systems so this is uh, general one uh, nine step model that is available on the internet saying that how to do one vulnerability assessment we need to make it happen right we say like we have a website we have a software like how to check right if we the owner of the company or owner of the website is not going to check the web, uh, vulnerability attacker from outside will check the vulnerability and then they'll do the attack right so if we are not patching the hole in our fence someone from outside is going to come via the hole right yeah so we'll see something uh, on this uh, nine step model so what is va you can see the pictorial representation which is given on the right side of the screen so you can imagine you have a wall so someone is standing and checking like okay what is there this is like a security mechanism you can imagine like a firewall in your computer also you can imagine like a wall which is available on your uh, campus which is safeguarding your campus so the attacker is checking like okay there is a say, uh, place sorry so there is a there is a security mechanism that is in place i want to bypass that i want to get into the system so what is doing is finding something like okay he can put a ladder over that and then jump over one sort of success second thing right he can dig a hole and then just that's what mice does right and you know just they dig a hole and then they go from one side to other side pretty human nature you can see you put a bomb place a bomb over the blast the uh, wall and then get into the scenario right so all these things right so you find what is the security mechanism what is available in the infrastructures you just find you do different routines to bypass that 
either you bypass it you crack that or you open it just to enter the premises you are not allowed to enter the campus but you are just entering the campus by jumping over that or digging a hole or else breaking the wall right so again another pictorial representation you can see here see so three methods right so there is a wall that is there you are just breaking it and coming in one sort of uh, vulnerability uh, pen testing things second thing is you digging a hole that way and coming this way you are not touching the wall but you are getting into the system third thing you are jumping over the wall right so these are things all these activities are called as pt penetration testing finding uh, something a weakness is called vulnerability assessment exploiting the weakness and then getting into the system this is a successful attack if you if i want to say you in some sort of fancy terms the so called hacking you hack into the system and get into the system your your pt is successful you say like your password is weak that is a va you crack the password and show them the password that is pt right so we'll see the steps in va so this nine step model which is that is publicly available on the internet i have just sorted it out so the first thing is scope so we can't say like maybe i have a college i have a group i have a company i'm just going to make everything secure again that is the ultimate purpose of your organization but you can't do it in a single run right so you need to define a scope okay uh, we'll take an example like uh, it'll be just uh, just a minute Uh, we'll take an example of your exam system, right? You are just going to conduct an exam. Nowadays, like everything is getting online. You are just going to conduct an exam for students online. You want to make sure, like uh, the exam system, or else the online system which you are giving for exams is not vulnerable. No weaknesses are there. If at all any weakness is there, we being the provider of that exam system or the organization, we need to find the weakness and patch it. The, we need to patch the hole, right? So scope says, like, okay, what we need to test. right and then what all the things comes into picture what we should not text right scope says like okay we have a website organization we are going to test the exam system of our college right we are not going to test the attendance system of our college we are not going to set, test the any other tender system of the college our scope for now is testing the exam system or the exam login or exam cell things right so you have defined the scope that is ready a written document that is uh, that should be authorized by your organization you get the scope document fine so that is ready next step the second step comes on testing so testing is the initial phase of your vulnerability assessment black box gray box and white box as the name goes black box if i'm giving you a black box fully sealed with a uncovered with a black paint you you don't know what is inside that right you can shake it you can see the weight and assume what is inside but we exactly don't know what is inside that so black box is like okay i'm just someone gives me a website uh, again your organization comes and hires an vapt engineer a security engineer like a uh, group you say like sir i am having an exam system which is hosted on my website my website dot ac dot in slash exams so you test me the website and give it to me so me being an investigator what information i got i know only your website name i don't know anything else so that is called typically called as black box testing we claim it to be an external testing someone from outside your organization they know only your name or else your company name or organization name or website with that single information they are going to test your website random testing checking the website what is the ip whether i can give an input you have a form for entering username and password giving username and password and checking you have, you have a form for applying leave giving some information in that and checking that is called black box testing the box is not open but externally i want to sign what is inside your website second thing is gray box testing some sort of hybrid testing before getting on to gray box we will see white box testing i'll i'll give you on a transparent box you say a, a container which is going to be like a plastic or a glass container whatever inside is visible so i am just getting on to your website your ka, ka organization website you give me a demo user plus you just share me a username password faculty login username is demo and the password is demo123 after i give the username and password i log in into your website now i become an internal user so now i am going to test all your organization i am going to send a request to you i am just going to send a file to you and check so that is called white box testing getting like maximum knowledge about your organization and then doing the i identifying the vulnerabilities so these testings black box is typically having zero knowledge or very less knowledge you say like i know 10 percentage about your organization sitting outside your organization doing a testing white box you gave me authorization you gave me some demo users or permissions to check i am having more than 80 percentage of the organization details i am doing a vulnerability assessment gray box is hybrid like you may give me some demo account you may give me some sort of information white box you will take an example white box means you are a network admin you are giving me the username and password of your network login 
right i got the admin login so i can do anything and everything inside the network that is called white box gray box you give me only a demo user black box you don't give me anything you give me only the website name so second phase you we, we found the scope we are going to check the web uh, exam login of our organization second thing we found some basic details what is the organization we say like your college name dot ac dot in where it is hosted what all the ports available protocols available we'll see about ports and protocols shortly fine so before that let me give you an example so i'm just going to check uh, net stack hyphen ano sorry i need to s t a t hyphen hyphen you know fine so you can see here right so i just run a command in my system it's clearly saying so what is the protocol used local address my local system to remove foreign address it can be a outside system it can be google.com facebook.com any website i am visiting so from my local system a connection is going to a system outside and then it's in established stage the connection is established it is having a typical process id process id is just like we have roll numbers in computers each process will have a process id so if we go to alt control delete and see your task manager right So it will clearly say, see, these are all the processes that is available now. I have opened a Chrome, I have opened an Explorer, okay, I have opened a Cisco WebEx, I have opened a Notepad. Everything which is running in my system, right? So when, technically speaking, someone wants to do a vulnerability assessment on your system or computer or network, they'll identify all these things. So they'll identify what is your system, what is your IP, what all the connection going in and out of your system, right? So which connection is vulnerable? Everything that will be checked. So there is black box, gray box, and white box. So how this black box, gray box, and white box are performed? We we'll see on the step number three. Fine. So just a minute. Um, I hope knit. dot ac. dot in. Okay. So your website is knit. dot ac. dot in, right? Let's take an example. I want to know where exactly your website is hosted. Hosted means which location your website is there on the internet, right? So that is called information gathering. Gathering information about your domain or information about the organization. So I'm just going to find what is knit.ac.in. Find what all the uh, where exactly it is hosted. Right, that is information gathering. Vulnerability detections. Okay, we know like this website is hosted on somewhere a server in Gurgaon or Delhi or some places. So I'm just going to find what is the IP connected to this. So I hope everyone will have some uh, info about IP. So I'm taking ping uh, www. kn it dot ac dot in fine it's typically saying okay ping is i'm checking whether the website is live or not i'm checking the connectivity it says like 182 let me mark it 182.18.166.206 so this is the website ip of knit dot ac dot in this is the actual place where your or is the domain or is the ip on the internet where exactly your website is hosted because you are having an website dot ac dot in it may be hosted on uh, ac dot in server fine so this is one thing information gathering after finding okay your ip information is found out so someone is going to say like what all the connections that is available to your system you say like your website what all the doors open right i'm finding how many doors are there you say like there are 10 doors available so how many doors are open how many doors are closed so those sort of information right so that we call it to be a port scanning scanning the ports of your system so uh, the same thing i'm just going to check like net stat I'm taking my local system, Nestor if any and go. It clearly says, uh, let's take only a single connection. Fine. I'm just marking a single connection. Uh, let me mark this. Fine. See, the connection is a TCP connection. Fine. The protocol says TCP protocol. My local system, you know, my IP, whichever I'm using, is one seventy two seventeen one zero five dot two local IP. It is running for a port number. 3342 so from my local ip to this port a connection is established to another remote ip ip is 40 100 140 80 and then the remote port is 443 so this how computer speaks from your local ip to a local port to a remote ip to a remote port a connection is established uh, locally it is having a process id called 4272 so at the same this is a legitimate process if a malware a virus is coming into my system right the virus is exploiting my system obviously the virus will have a Process ID, virus will have a local system, remote system, local IP, remote IP, and their ports and protocols tied up together. So that is called vulnerability detection, information analysis and planning. Right? We just say, okay, what all the information? I have just got an information saying that, okay, a process ID four seven two seven is there. 
I'm just going to just check on to the process. Let's take an example. I'm opening my task manager. So this might be the process. I'm just going to create a dump of the, okay. Um, this won't allow me because it's running in the system things. So I'm just going to, oh, okay. This is a notepad, the process that is running. Just creating a dump. What does it say? So I'm just finding a process which is running on my system. I'm creating a dump. Dump in the sense like you, because you see like you, you just show your ID card and get in. I'm just checking the ID card and checking what is there in the ID card. Your name, your organization, your validity, everything is there. I'm checking whether this notepad.dxe is legitimate or not. So dumping the process is just taking a copy of the process and then later maybe we are not going to discuss on advanced malware analysis. We'll be seeing some online tools that is available. So malware analysis is getting the malicious process or so-called virus process and analyzing it, fine. So those sort of things comes into the place when we are discussing about information analysis and planning, what to do with the process. Next thing is penetration testing. It is proof that in your system, maybe uh, port number 4727 is open. Using that uh, vulnerability, I'm just going to attack you. So if that 4727 is open, there are websites available online uh, which claims to give you some sort of uh, exploits that is available. Exploit is something like a bomb that can be play planted. So exploit says if your port is open, your port number 443 is open. So for that 443 port, there's a vulnerability available that is uh, that's active in your system. I can just enter into your system via that port. So that is called penetration testing. So now the attacker got into your system. After that, we do something on privilege escalation. So I have just got a control over your system. I got into your system as a guest user. Guest user will not have all privilege, right? So now what the guest user is doing is running some commands and then he's just going to uh, become a admin user of your system. See, let me give you an example again. So I'm just opening my command prompt uh, in an administrator because if you run as administrator only, it will just give you some uh, uh, privilege to update your uh, passwords. So I'm just running on this uh, system. I'm just checking NetSpace user. Now I got into your system. Let's imagine. So the attacker got into your system. He's checking like, okay, how many users are there? Amrita, InfoSec, Cyber, Sudhamani. These many users are there. So I am logged in as a username called uh, Sudhamani. Fine. So I want to get the admin control. I'm logged in as a guest user, but I want to get an admin control. I am running this uh, uh, command props as an administrator because I have the control over there. So I'm going to give a command like net space user space uh, administrator administrator start. Sorry, net user administrator. Just a minute. So when so whenever we just give this syntax, right? Maybe I don't have this privilege to run this. So whenever you are just having this uh, syntax, so you give netspace user and give the username. Let me give the username and give this. See what it is asking. So I'm just going, I'm logged in as Sudhamani user. I'm planning to reset the password of another user. I'm clicking a couple of enter. It says the complete commands completed successfully. What does it mean? I have logged in as one user finding a vulnerability in your system. I'm just getting on to an admin user. So typically this uh, command liner will just give you on a permission for resetting the password. Why this syntax didn't work here? Because like NetSpace user, whenever you take a typical Windows system, it will have a username called administrator, the default admin account. In my scenario, I have renamed the admin user to a different name. If an attacker is going to come into my system trying to reset the password, it will clearly say there is no user called admin because I have reset administrator user to a different username that won't be visible in this NetSpace user command. So that is on privilege escalation. I have escalated my privilege from a guest user to an admin user. After that, whatever I want to do, I can do. I can change the password. I can add a file, or delete a file. All these things comes under vulnerability assessment. So whatever activities I have done, because you asked me to just check your website or check your organization, I have just found the scope. I have done a black box, gray box, or white box testing, gathered some information, got your IP information, got your website information, logged on to the website or logged on to the organization as a guest user or as a low privilege user, escalated the privilege, become an admin user. After becoming an admin user, whatever uh, I'm just finding, okay, you are just HTTP protocol is vulnerable. Or else you're finding there's a share that is available on the system, which you can just copy all your files. So final thing will be result analysis and reporting. You make a comprehensive report saying that what all the weaknesses that is available in your system. We'll see some sample reports, right? The final thing is cleanup. There is one sort of uh, activity which is predominant now. 
right so i am an i am not a valid user we can assume like i am not a valid user i am an attacker coming on your network doing all these attacks while going back right i am just tracing all the footprints footprints which is left on the network right so attacker is just coming in doing all the attacks and uh, while going out the attacker is taking all the footprints or erasing the footprints that is called cleaning up phase so all these phases combined together uh, are categorized as a vulnerability assessment you can just uh, do analysis of your network so i'll show you some example uh, so before getting on to the actual content so i'll just drop my other window here so i'm just showing you an example see who is look up in this uh, website fine okay who is look up says like what is your website see uh, where it is hosted in whose name it is hosted okay it's hosted in your name uh if doing advanced who is look up will give you the ip information that's what we saw the ip right the public ip that is available so we'll see next right so there are many online uh, scanners that is available public scanners that is available i'm scanning your network okay this is hosted on the port number 80 port number 80 is your http port generally used for web traffic or domain traffic so that is available it's hosted on country india you have an ip public ip and then your server the server which is available on your website is hosted on microsoft iis right and that's what uh, we call this put printing in the ethical hacking phase so the attacker is able to find okay what is your ip what is the port that is open uh, what is the service that is running the server that is running and some additional details about your website the same thing you see a number of scanners that is available see the website says it is http only it is not https enabled right so whenever you visit a website you can see a lock icon at the top when you click on the lock icon it clearly say like so what is there in the lock it's typically a certificate we call it a digital certificate certificate is issued by a third party here let's encrypt this issue the certificate so any traffic going in this website is encrypted locked locked means i type something here and sending it to the other user so it is locked here and then only the other user will be able to open it or else the uh, information which is transmitted via my website is secure if your website is not having a lock icon at the top instead of lock icon it's having an exclamation icon or else a red color icon it typically says like your traffic is not encrypted your traffic is a bit of vulnerable traffic see that's what is given on what all the traffic that is available okay. see when i this is say like one one uh, look up point i want to hook up here is typically d dmarc and spf so nowadays uh, even after covid right so there are many a uh, sort of email related attacks happening online what does it mean someone will send you an email saying that hey i am mr x at uh, your website we say i am mr x at knit.ac.in also i am principal at knit.ac.in if your website doesn't have this dmark and spf filtering anyone can send a mail in any of your organization name so let me give you an example so let me give you an example uh, your your website like uh, principal sorry, principal at knit.ac.in if someone wants to send a mail from this id they need to have a knit.ac.in login it should be the principal he or she have to have the username and password they'll have a web login they need to log in and enter fine right? instead of having this the attacker will go to some xxx website i don't want to name the website fine right? so they'll go to an xxx website so in that website they'll create that from which address the mail is so they'll type it as this things if your web, if your mail server or if your web server your website doesn't have a dmark or spf policy right so anyone can send a mail with your name it, instead of principal is saying like hod it at knit.ac.in mail can be sent fine right? so one thing whenever we are evaluating our website or vulnerability we need to check whether the email security is having dmark and spf enabled fine right? so again many sort of mechanisms are there i am just going to randomly show so what all the keys that is enabled on your website uh, cookies is as i said right whenever you just store something on the website right so your username or password or some sort of information that is stored you know a cookie right cookie will be having a chocolate it will be having a mixer so here a cookie is typically like a ticket we can imagine a cookie to be a movie ticket right movie ticket what does it have movie ticket will uh, movie ticket will have some information about okay what is the show time uh, how many users are allowed right so then which is the screen allowed so combination of all these things will be a movie ticket so we'll take a cookie website cookie what are the website cookie will say okay this is a cookie for facebook.com fine so facebook.com this cookie is going to be for user like uh, ashoka fb dot i'm just ashoka facebook facebook.com fine 
and then it is valid for eight hours or something like that. So whenever I am having a web cookie, which is going to say my Facebook cookie, just like you have a movie ticket, you have a cookie that is available for Facebook.com. Most of the time, cookie will be stored in your browsers. Cookie will be stored in your local system. I am just opening my star temp. I am just opening my temporary files in my system. This is the temporary files in my system. So the cookie will be stored on my temporary files. Fine. So this website clearly says what are the cookies that is stored on your website, whether the cookies is open. Me being an attacker from outside, whether I can copy your cookie, I can open your cookie and see. So there are many web vulnerability scanners that is available. You can go online and you can just check what all the vulnerabilities that is available on the website, how to prevent it. Fine. So this is one thing which I want to cover on this tips in uh, vulnerability assessment. Fine. After this, uh, we'll just get on to the next phase. We'll see some demo, demo in the sense I have. Uh, Got some screenshots because the, this limited one or one and a half hours time we can just we can't just show a comprehensive demo. Whichever website I've showed you now works like uh, uh, the scanning website. They've already run the scanning on your website. It'll take like bare minimum five minutes, ten minutes, depending upon your system. It'll take more than like thirty to forty minutes to scan the whole website. Right. So we'll see the uh, security vulnerabilities that is available on the any website. Right. The same thing. Whenever you talk of vulnerability, you have a security system or else you have some sort of mechanism that is available. Either you are not authorized to open the door and enter, but you are opening the door and entering. That is one way. You are jumping over the door, you are bypassing the mechanism, you are breaking. Right? Three things. So we can just compare this with a password. So you have a website organization login. You, are, you don't know a password, but you know a username. You just speak to your friend, you get the password of them. That is your friend's username and password, but you are entering. You are not a valid user, but you are opening the door with someone else's identity and entering it. Second thing is, I don't know the password, but I'm giving username. I'm just typing some syntax in your password column. Without the password, I'm able to bypass. I'm just jumping over your network. I know I'm giving a demo user or dummy user. Without giving a password, I'm just jumping over the system. Third thing is really challenging, cracking the password. I know your username, your username at your domain.com, doing all sort of uh, tools and techniques that is available online with the so-called hacking tools. So the attacker is getting the password of your domain login. Right? All these things comes under the vulnerability assessment phase. And it, again, it obviously results in your pen test. We can see here. See, there's a website that is available. It is having a session ID. We saw a cookie, right? So it's having a session ID, just like a ticket. I'm copying the session ID from your system. The attacker is putting the session ID on his or her system. So you say like you are a faculty logging in in this system. It has a session ID. You are storing the session, right? So someone else is copying the session and putting in their session. So when they put the session in the web page, if the session is related to your domain at gmail.com or else your domain at ac.in. So if they copy the session and put it in their browser, when they refresh the system, without knowing your username, without knowing your password, they get your login. This we call as session hijacking or session stealing. Right? So that is one thing. Second thing, so you can see here in your web page, that's a separate um, control that is available. So we'll be seeing some attacks that is available. CSRF cross site request forgery. The attacker have already pasted a malicious code on your system. Anyone visiting your website, they click on the link. Their system is getting compromised. Or else their login is going to the attacker. Fine. That is on second thing. Fine. Uh, again, this uh, whatever attacks and other things which are I'm showing here are uh, pretty uh, connected to IoT systems because I don't want to cover general web attacks that is commonly available on internet. So you can see here one simple example of uh, things. So Mirai, M-I-R-A-I, because we, are, we, we have in our agenda, we have something related to malware, right? So you can go on Google Mirai. It's one of the most commonly used IoT malware, or else IoT botnet, or else in name term, it's IoT virus, fine? So this Mirai, you can see here the code of Mirai. So you can see here on the bottom of the screen, the activator, the motor should move. You can see the uh, marked region. Not only the motor should move, the head should move only within the blue marked area before the attack. Okay, it is fine. The other outside area is dangerous area in which your device is not allowed to move. But when the attack is happening, after the attack is happened, you can see the head is moved, moving outside the area. Right? Because this attack says like whenever the code is running, it gets onto your system. You click on the link, everything is running. You can claim it to be like you have a gate that is not allowed to open, right? But some the attacker gets control of your gate. Right, so they do an attack. They just run the script, the malicious script. After that, what happens? The gate moves. Even if 
the, um, the control is not given to the legitimate person right so the control is not given to a uh, attacker right? so you can see here some process comes in you click on the link that comes into your system and after that normally they can see before the attack the it moves on the normal region but after the attack it goes out of range without your permission it moves on in and out in different dimensions right so you can see here this is typically if at all uh, you have just uh, gone through something related to network analysis this is typically a capture of your network from this time to this time source ip to destination ip this is the connection going so one packet you just click on the packet you just go to the properties of the packet it clearly says so you are discussing right encrypted and unencrypted you go to the website you find some lock icon at the top that is called encrypted encrypted means lock there is you go to the website that is not encrypted so what is the difference between encrypted and unencrypted encrypted in the sense any message you send is locked and sent on the network anyone getting the message capturing the message in between you can see at the bottom this is encrypted text nothing meaningful you get only some sort of random chunk but if the data is not encrypted you will find some meaningful information okay in this device i am having an sql3 database that is stored and it's having some information if at all the individual is sending a username and password in unencrypted channel it will be visible username demo user password demo123 it will be visible just like that so there is a two differentiation which we which i just want to highlight define this encrypted and unencrypted so vulnerability assessment in terms whenever we go on google for vulnerability assessment uh, there comes a website called uh, oas if o w a s p right so as foundation it's an open source foundation which is going to list the vulnerabilities you don't want to go and search the first vulnerability in your system your website or organization oas is an open source group they have an organization they have a list of vulnerabilities that is available see let me google for uh, oas top 10 it's going to list the top 10 vulnerabilities in your any sort of it infrastructure see injection broken authentication sensitive data broken access control cross site scripting we'll see one by one at least we'll see a definition of all these vulnerabilities so these are all the weakness these are all the top 10 vulnerabilities you know right so you, whenever you just uh, like uh, keep on assessment and give a marks we'll see okay these are the top 10 students someone got 100 99 97 90 right we rank the students based upon the marks so this website is ranking vulnerabilities weakness in your it system or weakness in your computers based upon their severity see injection is the most common attack you see 100 per last year in your company website or your organization you see like 1000 attack happen out of 1000 attack you see like 600 700 attack might be due to injection because there is a top 10 top vulnerability that is available right so we'll be seeing some sort of wasp top 10 vulnerabilities that is available again i'm just as i said i'm just going to list the wasp top 10 iot vulnerabilities the same thing is applicable for web vulnerabilities also to just give you some uh, sort of uh, realistic stuff like i've just added this io wasp top 10 iot vulnerabilities fine right? see first thing you will take an example we have an ip camera your organization your company has a ip camera so camera is available in your campus you have 10 cameras that is connected to an ip iot again a general this uh, definition internet of things whichever is available on the in your organization which is publicly available on the internet your organization it has 10 cameras the 10 cameras are ip cameras it's having one one ip each anywhere on the internet i can just type your ip if i know the username and password i can get into your system so the first vulnerability in your system weaknesses is guessable hard coded passwords as i regularly i was speaking for the past half an hour right password is username is see uh, let me give an example see username is admin fine password is admin at 123 so let's take an example like if you if you are talking about your organization right uh, just a minute okay your website is kn uh, it.ac.in right so let's take an example of this um, so your admin whenever you join your registry the admin is giving kn80.ac.in this is your organization your you will might have a password okay your admin will have a password like admin or administrator might be the username fine your password might be kn80 or else uh, kn80 at 123 Arals K N A T twenty twenty Arals admin at K N A T something like that. So what I'm doing, I'm just generating a random password. I'm guessing the passwords, weak passwords. See, 
guessable hard coded passwords or else you you have a website that is having a common password pass username will be you say like you are having a wireless wifi device tp link device username will be tp link password will be password most common if you are not changing the username common username and password any attacker because your tp link device the router you imagine it will be like a router or else it may be a wifi router that is connected on internet from your house or your organization someone gives you they know your ip okay they are giving your ip 108.3.3.4 some public ips so they get on your router space they it last for username and password they know it is a tp link router if you are using the common or most well known username and password tp link is username password will be password or else admin will be your username password will be kn80 at 123 fine so the first the most common vulnerability or severe vulnerability is weak guessable or hard coded passwords any security system it's going to be dependent on the password if someone gets your password compromises your password the whole of the security is done right so the first vulnerability is weak or guessable passwords so it can be easily brute force that's what i did right publicly available on the internet unchanged credentials your tp link router gave you your username as tp link and password as password but you are not changed easily brute forceable what i did i did i randomly guessed right guessing in the sense i'm guessing kn80 kn80 at 123 kn80 2020 brute forcing brute force you can see here on the left screen brute force is trying all possible combination let me give you an example of a brute force we'll take an example of an atm atm is having a pin from 0000 to 9999 again our atms will have like maximum of four attempts or else three attempts right above three attempts you can't enter we can imagine like maybe a system which is going to have multiple attempts it's not going to limit you based upon the attempt we know the range range is 0000 to 9999 what the attacker will do He'll try zero 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 zero, then try zero 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 one, then try zero 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 two, then try all combinations till double nine double nine, right? So practically speaking, your password might be anywhere within this range. So what the attacker is doing? The attacker is doing a brute force, trying all possible password combinations. So that will be the common vulnerabilities on your website or your uh, system, which the attacker can guess or try your passwords. We we'll get on to the second. one question brute force is little difficult to actually do because brute force is combination they'll be trying and even if we try for all the combination it will be very much time consuming don't you think obvious uh, so let me just uh, so when we are talking about this brute force right let me uh, come up on with an example how strong my password is let me give you on a, a website that is available online so it says like how secure my password is fine So I'm just going to check randomly. I'm just going to type a password called password, right? Uh, P A S S W R. It says like instantly it's going to crack the password, right? Uh, instead of this password, uh, so let me type like password, right? Uh, password at sorry at one two three, right? Or else uh, we say like uh, admin at K N I T, fine. So let's check password. It can be cracked instantly. I'm taking password at one two three. I say like 200 years, pretty strong. So I'm taking admin at K N A T. It says like 28 years. Instead of that, I'm just giving only admin K N A T. Fine, without a strong character. It says like two minutes. So what is it? Uh, when we are talking about the complexity of password, right? The complexity of password involves in like uh, uh, how strong the password is. You have a small character. You have a capital letter. You have a number. You have a special character. And then older days, password should be eight characters long. But current day minimum you need to have a 12 character password. It can be your Facebook password, it can be your website password. Because as Nam was asking, right? So brute forcing is pretty tough. But current day scenario we have some sort of GPUs that is available, right? So GPUs that are the systems, the high computing system that is available online. So normal system for cracking, you see like an eight character password, which is going to be a combination of a capital letter and small letter uh, and a number. Fine. it's going to take like maybe a normal system it's going to take like 4 weeks fine but for a gpu in current day scenario it will take like instantly like it can just crack the password in within 6 uh, hours see when you met a heard of quantum computing right it's going to up and booming in research area quantum computers will take like within a frag it's, it's like uh, very less like it's within a hour of uh, 20 minutes it can crack the password you can see the difference right so normal passwords will be like it will take like 4 uh, weeks to just crack the password some sort of attacks which you just perform it can just do it in 6 hours using a gpu but using qc quantum computing or advanced things even very less 20 minutes 2 minutes 3 minutes depending upon the complexity 
as you are seeing when we talk of brute force brute force we are trying all combinations for for ease of use i gave you an example of 00002 double nine double nine we will take an example your company numerals your your uh, organization passwords your organization password is eight character strong they say it should be like capital and small mixer Capital letter, small letter mixer with an alphabet. They don't uh, if, if if they don't give a special character. So what might be the combinations? So this eight character one two three four five six seven eight might be a combination of all numbers. It might be a combination of numbers with special and characters. So zero to nine will be one range. The numbers you need to take care. And then small a to small z is another range. Capital a to capital z is another range. So this is the range. so will be we claim it to be like some sort of uh, rainbow tables you can just go on google for rainbow tables so what is this rainbow table says it's just creating a password dump so i know i am just going to create a password for eight character with small capital and numbers just creating all just from 00002 i'm just going to generate all passwords till z z z all eight characters so this can be created online so there are like password dumps that is available online let me give you an example like uh, off crack uh password dump that's available the off crack is a open source forum that is available online uh, off crack password dump uh, like 2gb let me check the 2gb dump that is available on the web fine yeah so you can see here right So this AppTag is one of the password tagging tool. You can just download it. It has a system which will allow you to generate the password. You can generate the password for all the characters. You can generate a 2 GB password dump. It's going to have like uh, maybe 1 million passwords. You can generate 10 GB password dump. It's going to have like uh, 10 million passwords. So you can generate all password combinations. Here to is it 12 characters? All combinations you can generate. It might be like a 40 GB dump. So all these dumps are publicly available on the internet. If someone wants to do a brute force on your website. they can they don't want to generate the password on your on their own because it's most of the password dumps are commonly used passwords are this rainbow tables are available online they can just get down to the internet and then they can uh, typically copy the dump and try it only thing if you don't have any sort of uh, re attempts right you're saying that any number of times you can enter the password these sort of password uh, attacks will work if you have a lockout mechanism giving the password four times wrongly locking the system then uh, in that scenario uh, this might not work so that is called hardening there's a vulnerability in which multiple password attempts may be gone you are hardening you are patching the vulnerability saying that you should not enter password wrongly for more than four times if you are entering that you need to wait for 24 hours to enter the next password again i hope i have just answered this so second Thank vulnerability you, is like uh, insecure network services that's what i showed you in the next chat right your website is running a service called ftp file transfer protocol running on port number 21 again if it is vulnerable to the common ftp your ftp password I'm, i'm just randomly giving the things i have not done any comprehensive uh, pt or something like that you might have a ftp like uh, sorry uh knat at ac dot in right you might have an ftp user like ftp colon this might be your ftp address if at all you have an ftp it might be having a port number 21 if i type this in the url website if your ftp is open it last hey welcome to ftp of knat You just give me the username and password. It'll ask for username and password. So if you are using a common username, uh, K N admin will be the user. Might be the username uh, K N E T at one two three. If this is a common username and password, anyone scanning your website on the internet, they know they found out that port number twenty one file transfer is open. If they try to do a brute force, if they are able to find the vulnerability successful, they can get into your system. Any file transfer, any file which you have put it on the network for access for your legitimate employees or legitimate faculties. anyone on the internet who found a vulnerability on your website can exploit and then they can copy the files so this second thing is insecure network services just like doors open a service that is available on your website that is insecure that is publicly available on the internet that's what i was explaining here so third thing is insecure ecosystem interfaces as i said right so all these top 10 vulnerabilities injection attack you have a column in which you want to fill a fill a form for an event your email id first name last name and comments you are filling email id you are filling first name you are filling last name instead of comments you are putting a script there let me give you an example of a script layman script s c r i p t fine so and then the script will be close to like this so the, if your website is vulnerable to any of the script attack so to proof of concept i am giving a warning call 
your bean hack so if this script is vulnerable your website your website is having a comment column in the comment column i should type that okay comment column that event is good fine something like that i need to comment instead of commenting like that i am copying a script and pasting in your comment column if i click on enter if your website is vulnerable to this injection attack it will give a pop up alert saying that you have been hacked it's typically a proof of concept script so this sort of scripting attack your website or something is vulnerable is whatever i have just tried now is typically a vulnerability is called xsx cross site scripting attack fine so insecure ecosystem that's what the thing your website your ip your api api means like you have given an api from your website to act to just copy something or else that's what we regularly do right we take a photo on instagram we give the permission to post it on facebook we have an api which is giving a permission from instagram to facebook so api is typically giving a access or control to your system to a third party fine so common issues will be lack of authentication checking whether you are a valid users lack of authorization checking the password weak or weak passwords or weak encryptions lack of input output you should enter only a comment instead of comment you are entering a script fine so that is insecure ecosystem interfaces okay lack of secure update mechanisms so because i have just given an example of internet connected devices iot devices you have an ip camera connected you got the ip camera before one year but you have not updated the ip camera updated in the sense uh, you say like tp link is a manufacturer give you the camera the camera has some vulnerabilities the company have found the vulnerabilities they are giving you a patch they will give you a patch you know right your ms your windows windows 7 windows 8 windows will update it your antivirus will update it what is an update have update typically has as patches your system your software is vulnerable the vendor the company which is given you the system is giving you the patch to just patch all the recent vulnerability that is they call the so called update so if this your system is not updated right you can see here this was one of the common forum that is available from karen mellon university study they have found a list of vulnerable uh, devices that is available online so then the fifth vulnerability is use of insecure or outdated components you know right i am just giving an example whenever you are just using a website http runs on protocol port number 80 https the so called secure protocol runs on port number 443 so if you are using an insecure outdated component like a protocol like http your website is vulnerable right i can see here in this example so what all the things you are using a older version of your uh, browser so you can just generally go on google i am just checking for hard bleed right so hard bleed uh, hard bleed i am just looking for this hard bleed what it says it's a bug bug is simply like a vulnerability that allows internet user to read the memory of the system by vulnerabilities of open ssl so open ssl is a protocol that is used on the website for https if you are using open ssl 1 2 3 Three might be the current version. You are using older version, OpenSSL 2.0. Fine. So as you see, like a uh, heartbeat check website. Save web. See there, there are some uh, vendors that is available. Your website is vulnerable to this heartbeat. I am just checking like www. Dot, uh, I'm taking some random website. Uh, uh, I don't want to check uh, Yahoo. dot com again. It won't be vulnerable. They made a patch. See. everything is check out it's fine right so if i am checking any website which is vulnerable right uh, i am just giving a website in this if it says like it is vulnerable then you can conclude that the website which you are scanning is vulnerable to hard bleed attack the same way meltdown and spectre till now we uh, we assume that vulnerabilities weakness comes in terms of software right all will be software vulnerabilities but meltdown and spectre are hardware vulnerabilities you know right we when we talk of computers right we know cpu your i5 i7 the cpus there are vulnerabilities that have discovered on your hardware so melt meltdown and spectre are the vulnerabilities that were discovered on the hard hardware so you can just go google if you if you want to get some additional details i strongly recommend go google for meltdown spectre hard bleed vulnerabilities it will give you some additional information about what all the vulnerabilities and how to find whether your website is vulnerable or your uh, system is vulnerable insufficient privacy protection we are discussing right so you are storing your password in a browser that is not protected any user coming from outside can just get on to your website and then they can they can copy your browser passwords so again a comprehensive report that is available on turning milton sinus things insecure data transfer and storage that's what we saw on ftp right so you say like your ip camera is regularly sending a photo of your uh, company or else your organization to a remote server the transfer their data is not secured instead of using https they are using http 
So what is the attacker? The attacker sitting in between can just capture the data. It's a photo. They can just see the photo access like a photo, right? So that's what we saw in the example, right? Let's encrypt. See the example which I gave, right? HTTP is a website without a log. HTTP, yes, it's provide. See, let's encrypt is one of the website. Also, the vendor who's providing you this secure protocol. So how to find? So HTTP using port number 80 will have an open lock symbol or else maybe an exclamation symbol. Fine. And any website which is using HTTPS will be having a lock symbol. When you click on the lock symbol, I'm just clicking on lock symbol of mid.google.com. So it says this is the certificate of google.com. It's issued by some authority. It will have the detailed information. Who issued the certificate? What is issued? What does it mean? It gives a certificate saying that the traffic which is going on to this website is secure. Fine. So most of the common websites, whichever you are using now, internet connected websites or devices, they're not using this secure data transfer things. Again, when we talk of IoT devices, it's even more vulnerable. 90% of devices which is connected on internet, your IoT devices, your IP cameras or devices that is connected, they don't use any sort of security mechanism. Okay? Lack of device management. As I said, right, when you get a device, the device should be there. Regularly, you need to monitor in your network. There are some 100 cameras. All 100 cameras, you need to monitor regularly. You need to whether, check whether the device is working or not. You need to check whether the device is active or not. You need to check whether the device is patched or not. Everything has to be checked. Right? So that is comes under device management, checking the device cycle, checking the device functionality, checking the security of the device. So that is not done on real world. Insecure default settings. Default settings, as I said, username will be admin, admin, password will be admin123, at one, two, three, those sort of things. Default settings that is open. You can see here, right? There's an FTP that is open. We saw in the second vulnerability, right? So in this system, there's an FTP file transfer protocol that is open. Any attacker coming from outside, you click on the FTP, admin, password. If it, is, if it is a common default username and password, they can enter your system. Right? The final thing, the 10th vulnerability in your IoT system, the most common vulnerability will be physical security. So someone coming onto your system and then they are just taking a system and then they're going off. They are just removing the camera and running away. Physical security, right? Or physical hardening. You can see here, right? Whenever you open, a, you take your laptop and move it upside down. At the bottom, you'll be finding a sticker like this, warranty void. What does it mean? If the sticker is open, warranty is void. If you go to the company and say like, hey, you want, my system is not working, this device is not working, they'll say, you have opened the seal, your warranty is void, right? So these are the top 10 uh, I just want to list. Uh, the final thing of this top 10 uh, vulnerabilities on IoT devices, you can see two devices, left and right. So this device, let us assume that this is your IP camera. So your IP camera is having, uh, when you open the camera, it will be having these sort of connectors. So it's going to have a pin called JTAG. This is a device, the so-called uh, device called JTAG letter. It's typically a so-called hacking device. With this JTAG letter, you can see pins, right? Pin number one, two, three, four. Connecting this specific pins to the pins that is available on your IP camera or your IoT device or any device which is coming connected, JTAG pins. So you connect the pins with the connectors. You can just copy all the data, just like you just take your mobile, connect it to your system and copy the uh, photos, videos that is available on your internal memory SD card. The same way you can connect any device with the appropriate uh, connector and then you can dump the data. The data will be your device's internal memory. The memory will have what is the data is there, what is the uh, detail it is sending. If it is, if it, if it is an IP camera, it will have all photos that is available or stored. It will have all logs of which details is sent, when it is sent, everything will be available. This is lack of physical hardening, right? So all these things combined together will be the, because we have listed only the top 10 vulnerabilities. When you go on Google, you find thousands of vulnerabilities. Meanwhile, in this half an hour or one hour session, when we are speaking, there might be some 10 or 20 new vulnerabilities that is available, newly released on the internet, right? So. Okay. Uh, Okay, coming again, let me just see all the top 10 vulnerabilities which you have seen here. So these are the vulnerabilities which you have seen, find the top 10 vulnerabilities. So let's get on to the second part to just give a justice uh, for the malware part, the second of which you are given here. Malware IOCs, fine. So IOCs again is a technical word, right? As the name goes, it is indications of compromise. Let's take a real world example. So nowadays everyone is stuck on to the pandemic of uh, COVID, right? So what are the things, maybe a person sneezes, is getting a fever for continuous, 
uh, number of time, maybe like 48 hours or 72 hours. Or else he has some symptoms of some sort of COVID activities. We claim that he is COVID positive. We'll just take a blood test and then just uh, give a conclusion saying that he or she is COVID positive. So what does that mean? We have we found some indications, right? We found some indication that a compromise has happened. So that is called IOC. So in our scenario, you're sneezing, you're having a fever, that are called IOCs. So in this computer scenario, malware scenario, malware IOC or malware indication of compromise means that's a vulnerability in your system. You, you can take an example. I'm just opening my system task manager. I found out, okay, this con host, this is not actually a virus process. I'm just giving an example. This process is a malware process. How to find this as a malware process or how to identify out of these many processes running on my system, which is a malware process, there might be some indications available on my system. That's what we called as IOC. What is an IOC means? It's a piece of forensic data. It may be a file or it may be a folder or it may be some sort of uh, content that is found on your system, right? So what is the purpose of the data? Whenever a data, uh, maybe the threat hunter, maybe a security person is checking for these things, they'll search for IOCs. They'll go to your temporary file and search for IOC. They'll go to your desktop and search for IOC. They'll go to your task manager and scan for all the processes. What is the purpose of scanning this? Just to determine the location of possible data breach, or else just to determine the location of the virus or malware. You see, like your house is n number of rat holes. So you just find a rat hole and then catch the rat. So IOC is typically finding or checking for the common location in which this viruses or malwares are going to sit in your system and then giving a proof saying that, okay, this in this location, let me give an example. I'm just getting on my local temporary folder. This is my temporary folder. Okay, in this temporary folder, I found one of this process to be vulnerable or malicious process. So this is the so-called IOC. And I'm just checking on this. This file is IOC file indication of compromise saying that my system is infected by a virus or ransomware or something like that. Right? So we'll see some uh, example of IOCs in this scenario. I just randomly taken some websites that is available on the internet to just give you a proof of IOC. One of the most commonly available websites typically uh, finding vulnerabilities related to malware traffic, network traffic that is related to malware is malwaretrafficanalysis.net. They, every day they use at least one or two small samples that is available on the internet. They'll give you, when you go to this and check on to, <coughs> sorry, recent IOCs, right? it'll clearly say, okay, yesterday, one of the network that was infected with the virus attachment in your PDF file. So they might have just captured all your network traffic and then they're given you a dump, dump of your network traffic. So that can be found. You can just, those who are interested in network analysis, network forensics, those who are doing research on network security, this website will be more helpful. It will give you a proof like what is a virus, what is a malware, how to find a malware in the network, how to report it. Everything will be available. They'll have n number of samples with screenshots, how to do. Malware domains list, as I said, we scanned for websites, right? So your, your company's, your organization IP is 108. So you can see, you can just find that IP and put it in this website. There are many websites available. Some of these websites may be outdated, closed, but you can just go on Google for malware domains list. You give an IP, it will clearly say whether the IP is good or bad. You can see here, see this IP belongs to China, US, Russia. This is a good IP or bad IP. It will just give you clear information about whether the IP which you're scanning, which is having a connection with your system is good or bad. Suspicious domains, you know, right? Your call and company college name at ac.in, maybe google.com, amrita.edu. You just get a website, you get a mail in the mail, there's a website link. You want to find whether the link is good or bad. So you copy the IP or copy the website name and post it here. It will clearly say whether the website is good or bad. Saying like whether you can just click enter or else you can need to skip, it clearly says, this website is, whenever you click on the website, it's going to steal your password, right? Then we have threat miner. These are advanced threat mechanisms. You give your website details, you give your, your organization at ac.in or something. It will just scan all the things. So, so it, it has a database. See, it has like uh, 4801987, this number of malware samples available. If any of these samples, which is available in their database, is available on your organization, your website or your uh, company system. It will just identify and say, this is a virus that is available. You need to remove this. They'll give you instructions on how to remove the viruses. Right? You can go and find some GitHub codes. One of the most common code, which I want to quote it here, APT notes, 
we are talking about apt right advanced persistent threat a threat that is sitting on your system for the past 2 year past 4 year but it is not detected so this is the code which will give you some sort of insights which you can just run on your system and find some apts that is available on your you can run a security vulnerability assessment scan on your system you can run it on your network you can run it on your whole company or organization you can run it on your company's website anywhere you want run that's not be a problem another website critical stack they have some paid and free versions in which they can scan all your you can see here you can scan all your networks based upon ip ports protocol and say what is vulnerable in your system again uh, this is one other thing we have seen the worst top 10 right the top 10 vulnerabilities so if you give the website again okay, most of these website may have a trial version or else commercial version you need to pay and get it but free scans they will scan and show you you give the website it will scan whether your website is vulnerable to cross site scripting i showed you an example of scripting right open script you have been hacked close script if your website is vulnerable to this xss cross site scripting attack it will clearly say your it will say like how what is a vulnerability how to patch it sql injection you have a database sql database i am a user we who who has access to only open uh, maybe my user but i am just dumping all users database that's comes under sql injection fine so this is one of the common website uh, which is available for this scans tech help list again they'll give you a recommendations on what to do and then how to remove the vulnerabilities so one thing see indications so what is the indication says a document that is available on my desktop also wallpaper which i had previously is 2 mb now the wallpaper is 3 mb maybe some the attacker might have just replaced my old wallpaper with a new wallpaper which is going to act as a virus spy right so all these things after a scan you if you go for a, most of these online scanners or scanners will be paid scanners if you get a paid version of the scanners it will scan all your network all your computers and it will give you a report like this out of see like your 120 computers i have found some 1000 vulnerabilities out of 1000 vulnerabilities 700 vulnerabilities are repeated vulnerabilities if you're going to just uh, uh, close port number 21 out of 700 vulnerabilities 200 vulnerabilities are going to be closed automatically right so that's how these reports will be there so if you want to check on directories right you can see here this is typically an ioc indication of compromise what is the location in your document administrator local there's a file called file name dot rap that is a bad file that is the indication of compromise so it is having a sha md5 or sha will be the signature signature of the file because of this signature the tool have found out this have to be a virus file so what is the file does it is typically going to be a obfuscator or dropper dropper means from outside it comes as a pdf file when you click on that it's going to drop a virus in your system okay where is going to drop the virus you see right when we went on to the process monitor it's going to have a process called run dll when i'm going to open my task manager it has a process you may have a process called run dll 32 when i open the run dll 32 when i analyze with the thing it will just clearly say it's not the actual process it comes from this ip this port it is entering my system it's going to be a malicious process right so these are all the things are called as iocs so again i'll streamline network traffic from my system sorry from my local system to a remote system fine local ip local port remote ip remote port and udp connection is happening that is copying my browser passwords from my system and sending it to an attacker so whatever you have seen in this right this what all the last three screenshots which you have seen this two one so this first screenshot says like what all the vulnerabilities second says like what is the process that is responsible third says says what is the network activity this is typically called as ioc indications of compromise so this is related to the malware ioc which over you have seen so malware ioc there are n number of online and offline scanners available it's strongly recommended if you run an organization if you run a company it's strongly recommended to check your websites not like that you do a malware scan of your website today and then leave it for 2 years at least regular intervals it need to be done i'll say you on priority right you see sba sba is doing scan on their website for every 4 hours You see, Google, Yahoo, they are doing scan on their website for every to eight hours. You see, a normal company, IT company, scanning their website every twenty-four hours. You see, a education institution like you, you need to just scan at least your website once in a month, scanning your website and checking whether the website is vulnerable for any sort of IOCs are available. You need to find the IOCs and you need to patch it so that next time when an attacker comes, they are not going to get the control over your website. Right? I hope uh, this is the thing which I want to cover for today's session. We have. we have another 10 minutes before getting on things i'll give you a concluding note what we have covered today yeah harish yeah you can do 
just a minute yeah. so whatever we have seen today is typically a you can see here in this example right it's typically a bird's eye view of vue so we don't know what this eagle is looking at right it's clicking at the city scanning everything that's what we have seen today we have got a bird's eye or eagle's view of eagle eye view of vulnerability assessment only the eagle knows where it is looking at so if you are interested in cross site scripting you get on to cross site scripting if you are interested in sql injection you can get on to this if you are interested in password analysis you can get on to this so today scenario you have seen what is vulnerability analysis or vulnerability assessment they have both the names common what is vulnerability how to assess the vulnerability what is a malware again malware is again a type of vulnerability a so called malicious code how to find a malware finding a malware is called as ioc indicators of compromise and how to detect them and how to report it so this is the thing which you have seen so this is a general disclaimer i used to put you can see at the top sharing is security that's what we type because whenever you want to make a password right but the first to most common vulnerability is weaknesses is weak passwords so whenever you create a password create it in this sense you can see right sharing can be written like this happy can be written like this so instead of your name right uh, say if you want if you want me to just type your type my name right instead of this name if you want me to type my name i'll just type it like a capital letter a small letter a special character a number and a normal thing so it will take instantly to crack this password for cracking this password it will take like minimum 4 weeks to crack a password this origin so this is my general disclaimer right what are the contents which over we had a copyright for the vendor i am not going to claim any copyrights on the things fine uh, all all the things which i have discussed here is all about a general thing which i have discussed just on my personal opinion or the sharing which i have just seen so to conclude like uh, as we started with the note uh, my full name is ashok kumar mohan you can just go google find my name if you want to have any additional related anything related to cyber security on my i do my phd on digital forensics so anything related to cyber security and digital forensics i am happy to just help you i'll share my experiences i'll give you some hints on how to just develop on that so you can have a note of my name number or you can generally google ashok kumar mohan amrita cyber security it will take you to my faculty profile yeah so that's it from my side for today's session on vulnerability assessment and malware iocs so it's open to you participants we have another five more minutes any questions queries you can just unmute and ask if you want to type it you can type it in the chat i'm just happy to answer so this is vinay chauhan from pinati sultanpur yes sir i have a question for you yes sir so generally whenever we uh, do vulnerability assessment and penetration testing we have yeah. to open the system in the promiscuous code mode okay so what is the significance of promiscuous mode and how we can enable or disable this mode okay so when we when as per the input is given by you promiscuous mode is typically like putting on open mode for example we'll take an example we we all participants are here um, we we are taking an attendance i'm asking like who is ashok okay well, there may be one or two ashok who may raise hand i'm asking like who is sudha there might not be any sudha in there might not be anyone in the name of sudha here but someone raises an hand saying that hey i am sudha i'm asking like who is kumar the same person raises saying that hey i am kumar and i'm asking you maybe who is abhishek the same person raises the hands and says i am abhishek what is the conclusion whatever input you are saying or else whatever question you are asking the individual is saying that hey i am the person so that is typically promiscuous or promiscuous mode in a network you say like you have your network adapter your nac card your computer's uh, network hardware if you enable promiscuous mode in your network hardware what does it mean so you are just saying like whatever traffic whatever packet or network packets going in and out of the network or else going within the traffic you are capable of ca copying everything as per the protocol in the network you have a network card you have an ip see let me let me explain with a typical ip scenario so you have a computer your computer is having an ip called 10.0.0.20 right so you have another computer 10.0.0.30 so 10.0.0.30 is sending a packet and it's sending a packet on the network to 10.0.0.40 so what is the sorry i have missed this zero okay what is the conclusion this 30 wants to send a packet to 40 as per the protocol it might go via uh, switch or else it may go via router or any networking device it it will go to the networking device uh, 10.0.0.30 is sending a packet to the switch or router saying that the packet destination address is 40 saying that i want to send a packet from 30 to 40 so but this 20 if in this 20 your system the network interface is promise 
promiscuous promiscuous mode if promiscuous mode is enabled on your 20 your system any packet going on the network sh or router which you are connected 30 sends a packet to 40 you can capture because you are in promiscuous mode 40 sends a packet to 30 again fine uh, 40 sends a packet to 30 again so you can capture the packet right so promiscuous or promiscuous mode in networking term is typically enabling your network device or network interface in such a way that any packet going on your network interface or any packet going on the specific switch or router you are connected you are capable of copying everything in network terms or security terms we will have our firewalls we will have our ids and ips or security devices enabled in promiscuous mode so that they capture all the packet going in and out of the network so promiscuous mode is typically one of the mode feature just like you enable a feature right you put a tick mark and say that i want to just change my wallpaper every 5 minutes the same way in network promiscuous mode is a feature in your networking devices which allows you to capture not only the packet which is intended for your IP, it's going to capture any IP passing through the switch or router. You got the answer, sir? So thank you a lot for a wonderful session. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. So any other questions, queries? So I'm just dropping my uh, identity here in the chat. If anyone wants to ping me or uh, anything related to official, you can just drop me a mail to my official university ID. And then anything personal, because we do uh, private investigations related to cyber four and six uh, and cyber crime investigations and some sort of sort of support for VAPDs offline. So anything you want to get on to that, you can just uh, very well uh, drop a mail to my Gmail ID, which I'm just typing it in the chat. Email.com. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so if we don't have any other queries further, uh, thank you. Thank you all for this giving me this opportunity to share my uh, experiences on VAPT and malware IOCs. Thank you all. Yes, sir. So it was a wonderful session. Thank yeah. you so thank much. You,